Before we start, I want to clear things up with regards to what exactly is a moonlet. Now, some suggest that moonlets are very small moons, like the ones orbiting asteroids or dwarf planets, as well as the far out moons of the gas giants. Others have used moonlets to describe the hypothetical submoon, submoons being moons that actually orbit another moon, an amazing topic that I'm going to cover in a future video. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and in my humble opinion, propose that the term moonlet should refer to neither of these, and instead should be used to describe these clumps of material found in the planetary ring systems. While studying the rings of Saturn, the Cassini missions discovered moons orbiting between the gaps in the ring system. These moons are known as shepherd moons, a type of moon that we talked about earlier in this video here. Now embedded within the rings are these lumps and bumps known as moonlets, and in some cases they are given the term propeller moonlets. Whereas shepherd moons are big enough to clear the gaps in the rings by shepherding the particles either side of them, the much smaller propeller moonlets can only clear a gap a few kilometres ahead or behind them, creating this propeller-like shape, hence the name. Sticking to the aeronautical theme, some of the best examples of propeller moonlets have been named after famous aviators such as Earhart, Valerio, and Santos Dumont. The moonlets found so far are tiny, most being half a kilometre wide and in some cases are just 40 metres across. Now this makes them too small to be seen directly by Cassini, so it's thanks to these propellers that we're able to see them at all. Even though Saturn's rings span a whopping 280,000 kilometers, <clears throat> yes, I know the E-ring extends to almost a million kilometers and the Phoebe ring actually extends to several million kilometers, I'm just referring to the rings you can see from a reasonable distance here, okay? Good. The propeller moonlets are only found in a 3,000 kilometer band towards the outer edge of the A-ring, now, considering how close all these A-ring moonlets are to one another, it's been suggested that they're in fact remnants of an older moon, one that was destroyed either via impacts or was broken apart by exceeding its Roche limit. This ties in nicely with several origin theories regarding Saturn's rings, where some suggest the rings only formed in the last 100 billion years or so, and what we see today is the debris from moons ripped apart by tidal forces. Since the discovery of the first propeller moonlets back in 2006, 150 more propeller moonlets have been spotted since, some of which, Valerio, have been tracked for several years. While 8,000 propellers are thought to reside within the A-ring, moonlets have also been found in other parts of Saturn rings as well. Moving closer in to the much denser B-ring sits a little moonlet which has actually been given an identifier of S2009-S1. Based on the elongation of the moonlet's shadow and the angle of the sun at the time, this moonlet has a calculated width of just 400 meters. Now you may be thinking, why doesn't this moonlet have a propeller feature? After all, it's about the same size as the moonlets found in the A-ring. This is because in most places, the B-ring is about three times denser than the A-ring, and it's much harder for this little moonlet to clear a gap in front or behind it. However, you don't need a dense environment to spot a moonlet, as several have been found in the outermost visible ring, the F-ring. Again, looking at the Cassini photos, there's an obvious clump found in the outskirts of the ring. This has been given the provisional identifier of S2004-S6, as it could just be a collection of dust, but there's also a chance it has a solid core, making it a moonlet, and potentially even a moon. Now I mentioned that several moonlets have been spotted in the F-ring, and while this is true, the moonlet of S2004-S3 has yet to be seen again meaning it could just have been a temporary collection of ring particles that has since disintegrated, whereas S2004-S6 has been spotted several times. Plus, calculations on the dynamics of the F-ring requires a body just like this moonlet to be present, further indicating that there is indeed a permanent moonlet in the F-ring. What we could also be witnessing here is a moon in the making. After all, moons much smaller than this have been classed as moons, and S2004-S6 has survived the gravitational disturbances of the nearby moons as they whiz past, indicating it has a solid core. This is happening elsewhere in Saturn's ring system too. In 2014, a clear bulge was discovered on the edge of the A-ring. Calculated to be 10 kilometers across at its thickest point, and given the nickname Peggy, this bulge could be caused by a one kilometer wide moonlet migrating out of the A-ring. Of course, the opposite could well be occurring, and this is in fact a moon disintegrating back into the ring, but it should be noted that some of Saturn's moons did indeed originate from a ring system. While the term moonlet can refer to the teeny tiny moons, or the hypothetical submoon, which already has a perfect name, in the opinion of this humble lunatic, a moonlet should refer to the clumps and bulges found within the planetary ring systems, be they the remnant of an older moon with a trademark propeller, or a diligent little moon in the making.